Hi, I'm Dr. Judy Frazier. I'm one of the certification physicians at AMCD, and we're here to talk about some of the AME guide updates. This is in response to questions from the AMEs who are asking for an annual update. So this is the first, hopefully, in a series for your information. Right now for AMEs, conditions are currently followed by AMEs have conditions they can issue a regular certificate based on requirements in the AME guide. If they don't meet those, they can go to an AASI or an SI, which are all time limited and require special authorization. A partial list of some of the current conditions AMEs can issue after taking a thorough history and determining if the condition is stable is listed here. There's a new instructional category in the AME guide, and these are conditions that an AME can issue if they're within specific parameters as designed on worksheets in the AME guide. These are the conditions that are currently allowed that have worksheets or instructional information that you, the AME, can issue in your office. This should speed things up for you because you don't have to call AMCD or your regional flight surgeon for authorization if conditions of the worksheet are met. So what has changed? In the old AME guide, if you went to hypothyroidism for all classes, you would be asked to submit all pertinent records, a current status, names of meds, and thyroid function testing. Then it would be worked at AMCD or the regional office, and your airman would be given a special authorization that was time limited. What's new in the guide is there's this new category, and we're asking that the AMEs review the information. If it falls within worksheet parameters, you can issue a regular certificate. If anything falls outside of the worksheet criteria, you'll turn in the information as you did in the past for a special issuance. So the conditions AMEs can issue are khaki. Pre-khaki, for example, hypertension required an initial workup, lab, EKG, a current status, and a history. Now by following the worksheet, that is no longer required, and the AME can determine if the hypertension is stable. Regarding thyroid, you used to have to turn in all the information or call AMCD or your regional flight surgeon office for authorization. Now, if you review all the information, the TSH is normal and there's a favorable current status you can issue from your office. And we'll go through each condition at the end of the, pro at the end of the program. So how do you find the information? You go to the AME guide just as you have in the past. Remember the most updated version is online. So specifically with the worksheets, we ask that you don't print them out and use them to make sure that they have not been updated. If you go to the AME guide and you use a find bar and type in the name of the condition in the word worksheet, you should be able to get to that page very easily. There's two pieces of information that you need. One is the instruction sheet in the AME guide and then the worksheet. The worksheets only have three components. They have instructions, that are very brief and easy. They have different questions based on the condition, and then each worksheet has an identical information to put in box 60 based on what you did with that condition. So the instructions are easy. You, the AME, review the information that we ask about. If it's within the parameters, then you'll be able to issue. The parameters are listed in horizontal rows. Make sure that you, the AME, address each of the horizontal components. If you leave a horizontal component out, the worksheet is not valid. The specific comments in box 60 are how you communicate with AMCD or your regional flight surgeon office. This is how we know that the components were met. So we do ask that you put the specific wording in box 60 or the AME comment box. So the easy ones, if all the criteria are met, for example, hypothyroid. If all the criteria are met, you have the information in your hand, you've reviewed it, and it meets the criteria on the worksheet, you can just issue a regular certificate. All you have to do is put in box 60 or the AME comment box, Airman meets certification criteria for hypothyroidism. That's the only information we need. You don't have to turn any information in. You don't have to turn in worksheets. Everything's done. You can give your airman a regular certificate. If your airman has any other condition that still requires a special issuance, such as diabetes or, in, uh, diabetes or coronary artery disease, 
you still have to follow the required special issuance letter for those conditions, turn in that information as you've always done in the past. But what we no longer need is the thyroid information if you've put the specific comment in box 60. Important things to remember about khaki, everything that is a khaki condition is not necessarily khaki qualified. So just because your airman has hypothyroidism does not mean that in box 60 you can just okay that. It has to fall within worksheet parameters. So what if the airman does not meet the khaki criteria? Then you need to put in box 60 or the AME information box that you deferred because of whatever the condition outside the parameters was. Then the information needs to be turned into AMCD and it will be worked for special issuance as it was in the past. The address to turn in information is what is still listed in the guide. We ask that you turn everything in as one package and please don't mail duplicates as that slows down our system. The worksheets are not required, but if you turn them in, please make sure you identify who the airman is and identify what condition was not met. That speeds everything up from our end. So what if your airman had a previous AASI and now they're khaki qualified? There is no way for you to do that in your office without a new exam. So if they currently are in an interim exam phase, you would still issue based on the current AASI, give them a time-limited certificate. That may change in the future, but for now, that's, that's how you can address that with your airmen. When the information gets to AMCD, we can adjust it to be khaki qualified at our level, in which case your airman will get a, an eligibility letter as he has in the past. When the exam reaches AMCD, it is coded for the khaki condition. This will generate an eligibility letter. There's no instructional letter that will be sent out. The eligibility letter does tell the airman where to reference the information that is required for their next exam. So airmen, now, before you go see your AMEs, you need to look at the AME guide, print the worksheet, bring it to your treating physician so the treating physician knows what information we're looking for. The AME should pull the worksheet at each visit to make sure there have been no updates, identify the information that is on the worksheet. If they can issue, they should issue and put the specific notes in box 60. If the airman does not meet criteria for some reason, then they need to note that in box 60 and send in the information. Some questions that we've had from AMEs already, is there a physician in clinic looking at an airman who meets all of the khaki criteria for a specific condition, but they've called and said, there is something wrong with this person, I know he meets conditions, but there's a problem. In that case, you can defer put something in box 60 that tells us why you did that and send us the information in. The next conditions we're gonna talk about are conditions that do not have a worksheet. There's two of those, testicular cancer and prostate cancer. There is no worksheet for these conditions. There are new instructions in the AME guide that will allow you to issue if conditions are met. So prostate cancer, if treatment is completed, if there is no evidence of metastatic disease, they're not having any current problems, you can issue. If they've turned in any testing, CAT scans, PSAs, those still need to be reviewed, but if everything appears clinically stable with no evidence of metastatic disease, you can issue a regular certificate. For testicular cancer, same conditions apply. Once treatment is completed, if there's no evidence of metastatic disease, if they're back to their daily living, then you can issue a regular certificate. So for testicular and prostate cancer, there are no worksheets. We're gonna go over some of the specific worksheet questions that we've had so far. The first one is, if someone qualifies for a khaki cancer condition, how long do we have to follow them? Right now, you follow the worksheet, if there's a worksheet such as renal cancer, at every exam or yearly, we'll go over that in just a minute, and you're looking for any changes or reoccurrence. We also want to know if they've been released back to their primary care or if their oncologist is still, finding, still following them and if there's been any reoccurrence. Worksheet specific conditions. The first one is arthritis. Know that daily NSAID use does not require the worksheet or a khaki criteria. 
If they're only on daily NSAID use, you can go ahead and issue a regular exam just as you've done in the past. Remember, we're looking for symptom control, range of motion, flexibility, and functional ability, and that there's no side effects. So your AME guide instructions will look like this. If they're on PRN NSAIDs, you can issue a regular certificate. If they have osteo, rheumatoid, or psoriatic type arthritis, and they follow the worksheet criteria, then you can issue a regular certificate if they meet all the criteria. The next condition would be asthma. If asthma on PRN albuterol is stable, they currently require PFTs, which is a change, but this should be updated in the near future. If they are on any type of inhaled steroid or oral steroid, they will require PFTs at least yearly or at every exam. For glaucoma, changes that have been made include open angle glaucoma has been allowed. We currently will allow closed angle glaucoma that has been surgically corrected. There is a specific list for glaucoma on the worksheet of medications that are allowed. Any other medications are not necessarily disqualifying, but those have to come through AMCD or your regional flight surgeon office. The other big question we get on glaucoma is the visual fields. If an airman has been on an AASI and they've had normal visual fields, that is someone who might uh, qualify for the CACI program. If they have had a visual field defect, they do not and will not qualify for a CACI program. We have a lot of questions on how to read visual fields. We like to ask for Humphreys. If, the if a visual field looks something similar to this, or in the bottom right corner it says it's a normal visual field, that's fine to go ahead and issue. Usually we're looking for any defect such as this. If you see this on your visual fields, please, def please defer that and send that in. Even if an airman has had a visual field defect that is stable and we've been following it, that does not qualify for a khaki program. That still has to be worked with a special issuance. Everyone's favorite now is hypertension. Hypertension now has a worksheet. There is no longer an initial hypertension workup. There's no EKG or lab required. They do have to be on meds at least two weeks to be considered. For the khaki program, they can be on up to a combination of three meds. If a PCP doing the regular clinical work does an EKG and finds that it's abnormal, that still needs to be worked up as you would in clinic. If you have to do a workup for an abnormal EKG, we do want those results sent into AMCD. One other question that we've had is what if the AME transmits an exam and the airman's blood pressure is above the 155 over 95 range? In that case, the airman will get a letter asking for three blood pressures and a letter from his physician. As in the past, an AME can certify that the hypertension is stable uh, instead of the primary care physician. Next category is migraine and chronic headaches. The specific components to understand on here is what's not allowed. That would be anything that's ocular, history of ocular migraines, more than one a month, anyone who requires narcotics. Those do not qualify for the khaki program. They may qualify for a regular special issuance. For prediabetes, the only medication that is allowed on prediabetes is metformin. They have to be on metformin at least 14 days before they can be authorized on the khaki program. Their A1C has to be less than 6.5. And if they're on any other medicines, you have to defer, and that will be worked as a special issuance. We're going to go over a couple of the frequently asked questions that we've had to date, and then we'll take any questions from the audience. So do I have to put a note in box 60? Yes, that's how an AME contacts AMCD and the regional flight surgeon. That's how we know that they've either been khaki qualified or not khaki qualified. If the airman has a different condition, can I send in the khaki information also? We know that some of the information is embedded, especially if somebody has hypertension and diabetes, it might all be on the same letter. We ask that you do not turn in the khaki information if everything was qualified. 
If you do turn it in, we will look at that information and it will stay in the file. What time limit do I put on a certificate if they're khaki qualified? And the answer is there is no time limit. This is a regular certificate if worksheet parameters are met. So you just give them a regular certificate, no time limitation. If it requires a time limitation, it has to be worked at the AMCD or regional flight surgeon level. Can I issue a certificate for something almost like khaki? And we've seen this multiple times. Well, he's pre-diabetic, but he's on Genuvia. Is that close enough? If it does not follow the specific worksheet parameters, it is not a khaki qualified condition. If the airman currently has an AASI or an SI, can he or she elect to stay on that? At this time, no. If they're khaki qualified, you need to work it as a khaki condition. Where do I send the worksheets and the supporting documents? You don't send any of the khaki worksheets or supporting documents if they're khaki qualified. If you had to defer, then you'll send the information in just as you have in the past. For exams that were done before April 9th, there is no way for the AME to issue a regular certificate if they already have an SI or an AASI. But at the AMCD or regional flight surgeon level, that can be done. So your airmen may be getting eligibility letters for a khaki condition if your exam was after April 9th. So just be aware those may be coming. What if the airman brings in only a completed worksheet? And we've had this question multiple times. If they only bring in a worksheet, treat it as you would a hospital transfer. If someone brings lab and there's nothing marked on it and you can't verify that lab, you don't accept it. If it's been signed and dated and they're using the worksheet, as long as it also has the required information, PFTs, thyroid testing, then you could accept that. Important question, how often does the AME have to review the pertinent clinical information? If they're a third class airman, it's every two or five years. Second class will be yearly. Third class under 40 will be yearly. If someone is a first class over the age of 40, they have to do an exam every six months, but we only need the khaki information, just like on most of the special issuances, every year. If you don't know where the year is, ways you can help decide that. If they've received an eligibility letter, you're looking at about a year from that date. If you do not know for sure, you can call AMCD. The phone desk can pull up the last exam and see what was in box 60 and give you a date. Or an easy way to remember it is if you'll do it at the same time as the ECG. That just keeps everything on target. Retention of records in your clinic file, you need to do with whatever with, you need to do whatever is required by your state. Different states have different amounts of time that they need to hold records. AMEs have asked, what if I get a subpoena for my records? It's the same as the current policy. If you get a subpoena, contact our medical directors. Kay will be happy to talk to you. Her phone number is listed up there. So in summary, Everything that's a khaki is not khaki qualified. They have to make the worksheet parameters. If they were on a previous SI or an AASI, they may or may not qualify for khaki. Remember, if it was an SI instead of an AASI, there was something that needed more evaluation. So most SIs will not convert to a khaki, where a lot of the AASIs, the six-year offs, could potentially convert to a khaki. If they do not qualify for a regular certificate under khaki, remember you have to turn in the information. Please note in box 60 if they're qualified or not. If they're not qualified, let us know why. Do not send in the worksheets or any documents if they're khaki qualified. And the final one is remember that you're the physician in the office looking at this airman. If something to you looks odd or amiss, even if they qualify, through the worksheet criteria, since you're the physician looking at them in the office, put something in box 60 or the AME comment box, let us know what you think was wrong, and then we can work it from the FAA level. If you have any questions, you can always call AMCD or your regional flight surgeon's office. And any questions? Yes, Dr. Frazier. This khaki program seems like a step in the right direction. 
but it also seems like there's a lot more aeromedical decision making and medical legal risk that you put on my shoulders as an AME. Uh, is that the intent of the program? No, the intent of the program is to actually speed things up in your office and at the AMCD level. The idea of CACI is the decisions have already been made, which is what the worksheet parameters are. So if you're the AME and the airman meets the conditions of the worksheet, there's no additional risk because that has, that has still worked through the FAA with our requirements. Dr. Frazier, if I send in all the supporting documentation and the worksheet, do you guys review that to make sure that I made the right decision? We don't review your decision-making process. We do have a QA process that will look at any piece of paper on certain charts, and that may trigger a way to review it, but we don't review your decision-making process. We're trusting that you're using the worksheets in the way that they were designed and issuing appropriately. If you have any questions, you can always call. Dr. Fraser, what do you do with those supporting documents that we send in with the worksheet? The supporting documents all go into the airman's file, and if that file is chosen for the QA process, the entire file or the entire chart is reviewed. But anything you send in will, will get put in that airman's chart. You have said that the conditions are being changed. Now, where can I find a copy of these conditions? And where can I find all of these changes? The easiest way is to look in the AME guide, and the AME guide will have an updates section, and that will tell you the most recent updates. And it's dated. Uh, there were a whole bunch of changes as of April 9th, so you'll see that. Any other questions? This program is called Conditions Where an AME Can Issue. What if, as an AME, I decide I don't want to participate in this program, and I would rather defer those conditions to the FAA for decision? Well, remember that the khaki conditions are following instructions in the AME guide, which is what you're already doing as an AME. These are regular issuance conditions. So if you choose to consistently not use the khaki program, that decreases how well you function as an AME, and it may in turn affect your future to be able to do AME exams. Thank you very much for your participation. If you have any questions, you can always call AMCD or your regional flight surgeon's office.